Hello everyone. We are starting the live to discuss Spotify. I am just going to add in our host and our guest, which is going to be Lena Nilon from um, Nicosi staff. So one second while I invite her in. Hello, Lena. Hey, hey everybody. All right, so I'm going to invite in our guest and Lena, if you can start us off with the introductions after I invite our guest in, okay? Thank you. Okay, we're getting our second guest on here, Kristen Jensen. Kristen. Yeah. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Kiana. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Um, we had some tech difficulties, and it's actually, um, how should I say it? I'm on these platforms all day, every day. I pose as a team online. And I was still trying to figure out the settings and trying to figure out what's public, what's not, who can I invite, who can invite me. So to me, it was actually just such a great example of how difficult it is to stay on top of all these platforms. And as parents, it's like near impossible. So even again, someone who's on here day in, day out having trouble. So anyway, thank you for being patient with us. I'm so excited to have a hero of mine, Kristen Jensen. <laughs> talk about Spotify and just the harms of pornography in general. Kristen is the founder of Defend Young Minds, which really equips parents and kids themselves to reject pornography. And she does this through incredible books, um, curricula, newsletters. I follow her religiously as a mom of four. Um, her book, Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, I literally give out like hotcakes. I gave one to someone I met at swim practice last week. Um, people talk about it all the time. You have to get it if you don't have it. Um, and just Kristen, you and your work comes up so often. So just thank you for being a leader in the space and for joining us to talk about Spotify and the harms of parents. Well, thank you, Lena. It's so glad to be on with you. And yes, technology can be difficult, but hey, we, we got it. We got on. And so it's all good now. And um, I'm happy to share some of my insights and resources and have a, a great conversation that I think will be very helpful to anyone listening. Yeah. So thank you for the opportunity. Of course. Um, again, glad you're here. And um, listeners, please put in your questions into the comments. We'll we'll try to answer them as we can. Um, First, just really quickly wanted to let maybe new viewers know what the Dirty Dozen list is. So it's a yearly campaign by the National Center on Sexual Exploitation. It was started back in 2013 to really call out companies that we use on a daily basis and that we love and give us good things, but that are unfortunately also um, facilitating, enabling, and even profiting from sexual abuse and exploitation. No entity should be doing that and certainly not these major corporations that um, make so much profit um, and often at the price of of their users. So we call these companies out every year. Um, and this year, as, as it was last year, we put Spotify on there. So Kristen, I, first I was just curious, um, were you surprised to see Spotify last year or this year? Or did you kind of already know what was happening on this platform? Well, so yes and no. So yes, I was, uh, so no, I was not surprised, okay? Um, we have been hearing complaints from parents for years and have been writing about it on uh, defendyoungminds.com, our articles. Um, we've got uh, some articles up there comparing, but in the end, it's, it's really amazing. Um, you know, we talked about you know, the podcast that you can get, that you can just listen to explicit, explicit sexual content. Um, there's, and the thing is, is that these, these platforms, like they add functionality that, oh, you didn't know they had, you know? And so uh, they get ahead of you um, and ahead of parents. So no, I wasn't surprised, but as I read, uh, from your dirty dozen list and all of the complaints and all of the things that you've found as you've done some research and gone in and dredged up all of this, uh, um, basically uh, making Spotify a, I don't know, like Discord where you can, you know, chat and 
and exchange pictures, etc. cetera. Uh, that was deeply disturbing to me um, how, but, but it is amazing. Any platform can be used to do that. Um, and kids are clever and people are clever and they, they take advantage. So um, I'm very, very, very grateful to uh, the National Center for making this so apparent uh, all these harms uh, and all of this this stuff that's happening because like you said it's hard for any one person to keep up on this uh, we try to provide a lot of information so yeah yes and no <laughs> I, I have to tell you I was shocked when we were uh, getting some in reach, you know, because people will, it's one of the ways that we determine who's on the dirty dozen list, you know, parents will contact us or other allies will contact us saying, hey, you know, did you know this about this platform? And we were getting, starting to get more and more on Spotify. And at first I thought, oh, people are upset about some racy album covers or, you know, inappropriate lyrics, which I understand, but I could not believe when we actually went on there what we were finding. And you know, I have four kids, my oldest is almost 14, and I often use uh, questions that they ask me to spur my research. Cause I'm like, if they're, if they don't come to me, what would they find if they went on Google? So I just mm -hmm. put an anime on Spotify and was bombarded with some of the most horrific graphic pornography I have ever seen. And I, I just couldn't believe it. And how people were, and I, you know, we started digging into it and people who may not be on Spotify or maybe who are on Spotify are like, wait, but how? And people change their profile pictures to include sexually explicit imagery and pornography. Um, they, their playlists can contain this imagery. So the more we dug in, I just, I could not believe it, it was not hard to find. Um, and then this year we actually found, and, and I wanna make clear, it's not just anime, it's, it's also hardcore, pornography of, of real people, not just cartoon images. Yeah. Um, this year, we actually uncovered what seems like an entire network of both minors and adults sharing sexually explicit content, which of course is illegal, um, of, and sharing child sex abuse material. So even if teens are posting their own nude images um, and offering them for sale or to share, um, that content obviously is, is illegal, highly us. Um, so we were, we were so saddened because we thought that when, if we put Spotify on last year, if I had to place bets, I would have thought that they were the ones that would make some substantive changes. Um, and in fact, it seems to have gotten worse. Right. So I really felt yeah. we had to have them up. You know, Lena, I think that we need to almost back up a little bit and say that to parents, like you may have a concept that, that I did, a long a while ago that Spotify is this platform for like genuine certified like artists that you know are mainstream published to be on there and yeah some of it is inappropriate but you know it's kind of like vetted and no I mean anybody I could get on there anybody and so when you have a platform whether it's Roblox whether it's whatever where users can upload anything right um like like a youtube right if if when you have that that is where the danger comes in and that's where this ability to basically use it as a chat function and a, and a distribution uh platform for pornography comes in and so we have to get this idea out of our head that you know these are just like you know taylor swift or or something you know on on the platform no it's anybody and everybody in the entire world that wants to um engage in sexual exploitation um of and of minors trade you know these explicit and pornographic uh images so i think that's something that you know people need to remember that any of these platforms where users can upload anything that is a huge red flag. That's huge, huge danger. Yes, thank you. That means anybody can talk to your right. kid, you know? No, that is such an important point. And I'm going to say it again. Yes, if users can upload images or chat 
there is going to be predatory behavior, predators seeking to um, you know, groom and exploit children. And, but again, with Spotify, they actually disabled the chat function many years ago. So, right. but again, like you noted yeah. earlier, that predators are so creative and they, they've been using the titles. They yeah. use the title of the playlists as a way to chat to each other and signal to each other either that they have sexually explicit content or that, you know, they, they have it on their site or that they can obtain it. So, um, and this is where too, we are calling these corporations to be much more vigilant. You know, the times change, the technology changes and policies are constantly changing. So you can't, you know, Spotify might say, well, we disabled the chat function and we have these filters in place. Well, that was many years ago. And there's so much evidence now that the filters aren't working. Um, artists are not identifying as they should be if it is sexually explicit content. Um, and the chat function, again, they've, they've um, figured out a way to circumvent that. So we have to keep pressing on these corporations um, to be proactively looking and being ahead of predatory behavior on their yeah. platform. That's yeah. what the dozen list is trying to do. And Absolutely. Again, to yeah, yeah, you know, Lena, with AI, there's no excuse. Yeah. They can go in and blur or block these images. They have the technology. They've had the technology for years. I mean, there's a product called Canva out there that will do that on websites. They could do that certainly in their own app. Right. So I'm sorry. I don't believe that they don't have the technology. What they don't have is the will. And, you know, that's what you're trying to do is give them the motivation for all of us to use the technology they already have to, to protect uh, children and to defend them against predators. Right. And they, they, you know, it comes down to profit, right? They they could be putting the resources in to protect kids and all users, um, but they choose not to until there is bad press or public campaigns like this. I mean, the good thing is with we know that the Dirty Dozen list works. We know that the campaigns have had a, a very strong record of instigating change, catalyzing change at some major, major corporations, but we really just need people to step up and and make some noise as customers as users as shareholders you know people often ask oh well should i should we boycott spotify now we normally actually don't call for boycotts we only do that in very rare scenarios because we do think that actively um raising your voice again as a user as a customer actually has has more impact now that being said you know, we do want parents to be educated on the types of things that are on Spotify and that their filters truly don't work. And you can see a lot of the evidence we collect and, and get more details about how the filters will block out swear words, right? But the filter won't block out hardcore pornography. Um, you know, so parents do need to make, uh, you know, educate themselves on these platforms and the risks and make a decision about whether or not, um, you know, the platform is something that, they would feel safe uh, having their children on there. Um, but, but again, we're not necessarily saying don't use Spotify. We're asking you to call on them to do better. Um, on that topic, Kristen, I know that you have done reviews of of many streaming, um, music streaming platforms, yeah. including Spotify. And this is a question that we always get. To get you know, people say, well, if I'm not using Spotify, is there a better one? Is there something else should I, should I be using? So I'd love to hear from you and your assessment of Spotify and Spotify Kids, which I'll admit I have not looked into very deeply, um, and maybe just a comparison of some of the other uh, music streaming platforms. Yeah. So, yeah, we did an article called Best Music Apps for Kids. Uh, we compared top five for safety. So we that's the article you can find on defendyoungminds.com. Um, and... We go through all of them, including Spotify, uh, Spotify for Kids, which they did come up with, um, and monitored, you know, Spotify for Teens. So um, we also compare them. We have a nice chart at the back that compares them. Uh, Spotify Family, Spotify Kids, Amazon, Apple, and Gab. So ultimately... Probably the safest one is Gab because it's a hand-selected library. You've got to have a Gab phone. and um, But you can add Bark 
to the Spotify family. So at least you'll know when your kids, if they're listening to questionable um, songs or uh, and and content, um, podcasts and such like that. I'll but share what Bark is for our listeners yeah. who might not know. Yeah. So Bark is a monitoring. Well, they also have a Bark phone now. And we have articles comparing Bark with all the other safer phones, Trumi, Pinwheel, Gab. Um, so you should definitely look at that too. Um, so Bark is a monitoring. It, it will monitor um, on websites and phones. So yes, check that out. Um, but Spotify Kids, we talk about what it is, what you can do. The thing is, is that um, it you have to have a premium family plan, um, and uh, each they have a library. So this might work for young kids, but it's not going to work for teens, right? But it has um, age appropriate music and podcasts um, and audiobooks. Some of these things you still might not appreciate, but you know, it's at least, you know, uh, a, a curated, you know, um, thing. So you can, we have uh, uh, all the information on Spotify Kids on there. Now, if you do a monitored, you know, and you can whitelist things, you can block. Things. So it's 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 pretty good for kids and you, you want to check it out. It's not perfect, but um, uh, then there's the mon monitored. Um, but even with a monitored account, right, um, the only di difference between this account and a full account is that you have control over whether the account has access to play explicit music. But there, there's still a great deal of inappropriate content on Spotify. And this is the thing. Spotify relies on creators to correctly, you know, tag their work. So some of the explicit content gets through because they're not tagging it as explicit. Right. Um, so um, those who are sharing go... images through playlists or through their accounts, they are not tagging it and Spotify right. is not catching right. it. So even when you right. do explicit filter out, it's really important right. that the parents understand it's not going to catch that content. No. So no. yeah, they have a lot. And, you know, we found um, parent, parents and caregivers and even teens themselves reviewing Spotify. And even back in 2012, parents were calling on Spotify to do much more. And just two weeks right. ago, we're on a great list. I highly recommend it for parents listening. Um, it's actually run by Bark on Facebook called Parenting in a Tech World. I actually see people recommend your books almost <laughs> weekly. Um, but just a, da or a, a mom was just saying that her son was exposed to hardcore pornography on Spotify and noting that, you know, they were talking that as adults, they hadn't even come across such horrific, violent content until their 30s, right? We were, again, we're not talking racy album covers. We saw such sadistic, violent pornography on Spotify. I didn't even want to describe it verbally. Um, you know, we always left yeah. her a lot of the proof we find because you know sometimes people are like surely you're kidding or like nope here it is here is all you know, right. a sampling content that we found and we post that on our website um and they didn't even want to verbally describe it because it was so yeah. so yeah. fine so yeah i don't i don't do that either it's right it, you know but but then again you know there's this line like how much evidence do you show to really um, I mean, I remember a friend of mine early days took me on Snapchat and showed me what was there. And I was just like, yeah, okay, you can hear this intellectually, but when you see it, it's like you are absolutely blown away and traumatized. Yeah, it is. And it's, again, people, it, it's not hard to find. Like I said, I no. just put no. in terms that my- It's pushed. It's pushed about. to you. It is pushed. So- Kristen, I don't want to end this session. We have about uh, five more minutes. You know, so a child has seen pornography on Spotify or on Snapchat or Instagram. What now? What What do you tell parents? What are the steps that they should take? Yeah. Well, first of all, before any of this, I would say delay giving kids a, a smartphone 
if you do make sure it's one of the safer phones that are out there um delay giving them a social media guilt delay some of this um kids honestly can have a perfectly good childhood without this and and probably better second i want to say that you should start these conversations early you know good pictures bad pictures the whole premise was to um start this building a disposition in your child's mind to reject pornography and giving them really solid reasons why why they need to return away when it's so you know they're so curious um and so before this you definitely want to begin those conversations of you know why we want to not just you should do it but like why and why this is you know to protect their brain and their mind and to have a happier life right um so i call that the internal filter um and so that's the first thing but obviously you can't protect kids from porn in the sense of that they'll never see it right unless you keep them in a dungeon right and that's not healthy so um I, I think that that that's why we are defend young minds because we we know there's known enemies out there and we need to defend our children and give them digital defense skills right so the scenario you gave me is that um the you know the child has seen pornography on spotify or some platform first of all if you've talked with them and opened up a safe conversation they're more likely to come to you and tell you and if you're having regular conversations with them and you ask you know um they're more likely to open up to you and tell you if you have it don't expect them to initiate that conversation or have the vocabulary to even know how to talk about it right. um so but let's assume you've had these conversations and you, you know, but you find that you, your child is seeing pornography. Um, one of the first things that I always recommend is to stay calm. So we have a smart plan guide on our website called My Kids Saw Porn, Now What? And it's a curated, like 80 plus page um, curated ebook that gives all the different scenarios, all the different things that, that parents will want to know as they handle this. Um, and it's just our best collection of material. So the first thing is stay calm. And that's hard. But stay calm in front of your kid. If you see that this has happened, even if they've told you or you find it in some other way, um, stay calm. Deal with your own emotions first because you will have them. And then when you have calmed down a bit, make a plan. You know, what are you going to do? How are you going to discipline you know, do, you don't want to go overboard, right? Um, uh, you don't want to, you know, anyway, so make a plan. And we have questions uh, to, to ask yourself. And then, then start to have that conversation with your child. When you're calm, you can wait a day or two or three, right? You don't have to just jump in and respond in the moment. And it's probably better that you don't. And then um, to have these conversations with your kids, ask these questions but it shouldn't be a two-hour interrogation right it should be in a comfortable situation um maybe in a car drive maybe whatever and just say hey you know i noticed this you know i want to ask you and then just drip 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 find out the information have these conversations so that it's not so like freak out mode right for the kid so critical so you have these um, and then we have various other parts of it. Um, understand that your child is not the enemy. Porn is the enemy. Um, even if your child is curious, um, that doesn't make, curious. that makes a child a normal child, right? Yeah. So I think that, and then, then start training your children on technology. Level them up. Don't just hand them a smartphone. Level them up. So as you see them, being responsible for lower levels of access, then you give them higher levels with guidelines, with some rules, with some boundaries, and some consequences, so that you are training them up so that you're mentoring them. Um, and really, we have lots of information on that, even on discipline um, and appropriate ways to do that. 
um, on defendyoungminds.com. We have several guides to help parents know when to give them a smartphone. I will just go on the record. We do not recommend social media or a full-on smartphone till they're 16 because we have all the evidence. And, um, you know, Jonathan Haidt of the, of the Anxious Generation, that book that just came out that's just everyone's reading, I'm reading it, yep. says the same thing. And we've been, we just kind of put our, last year put our foot down and said, no, it may not be popular, but the, all the evidence, all the studies show children being harmed. Yep. So again, Spotify, I don't know. Is this something a 12-year-old needs to have? Maybe if you have a Spotify kids, I really, I really think parents need to think this through, be able to stand on your own because when your child is an adult, um, you want them to have had a childhood that is free from addiction and is free from um, the toxin the toxic uh, material that is in all of these platforms, including Spotify. Uh, so well said. And again, Kristen, thank you for giving people the resources because these are hard topics and um, we do need guides. We do need ideas. And to also know that it'll be okay, even if a child has um, viewed porn, which unfortunately the, the digital age we're in, it's an if, it's a when, not when. an if. Right. Thank you for the those resources. Yes, parents need to be involved, educated, and informed. But we are also, we, we need to hold these corporations accountable because it is so difficult and we can't manage all these platforms and understand the ins and outs. So we need to ensure that Spotify and Snapchat and all of the tech platforms are safe by their very design, that they are prioritizing, um, especially young user safety and well-being. And so we need to press on them to do better. So please, everybody listening, go to Defend Young Minds, sign up for their newsletter. I read it religiously every week. It has so much good information. And then also go to dirtydozenlist.com go on the Spotify page, you can read more about it, you can see what we're recommending, and you can take an action in less than 15 seconds to make sure that Spotify knows that you are onto them and you want them to do better to truly rid their platform of hardcore pornography, um, predatory behavior, and other inappropriate content that should not be accessed by kids. So thank you again, Kristen, for joining us. Thank you to all of you for participating. Um, we're out of time, but we'll scan for questions and ask them or answer them um, in the chat. Yeah. So thank you, everybody. And if I could just say one more thing, and that is, you know, jump on over to Defend Young Minds on Instagram and follow us. We have a lot of great content there as well. The best. <laughs> thank Thanks. you. Thanks, everybody. And join us next week at noon IG Live for our next Dirty Dozen List Target. Bye.